explain it to you when you guys are taking it home so that you guys understand it to take it back. I really had a hard time understanding it today. Anyway, so uh, these are the contents of me, Tanish, Solanki, and Malak Fadeh. We'll try our best. These are the contents. We'll try our best. And at the end of the slide, we'll go to the questions if you guys have one. Okay, so that's the tale of Kylo Ren. So, um, so it was a Star Wars day, um, fourth night, yeah. So, you know, the, 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 the first thing they started having a lot of questions and you know complaints about what's going wrong. And so, there were minor issues like you know, uh, with the plugins, the add-ons. You, 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 you guys are familiar with the add-ons. Grammarly, Chat GPT, and stuff like that. And you, you, in fact, even your dark mode and your yeah. dark mode. So that's all, that's all, that also comes under your add-ons. People started having problems because of a certificate. It's called incoming release of certificate. And uh, so Firefox actually tried to resolve the situation they had two ways. We'll, we'll be going through that in a, in, a, in a while. Okay, so let's talk about add-ons. Uh, we, we already did talk about add-ons, you know, okay, just like Grammarly, ad blockers, and stuff. So th that's how it works. This, uh, this diagram is, it, it tells us why it is necessary. Okay, so I, I installed Grammarly, okay, and, and when I installed Grammarly, it's, it's, a, it's actually a package. It doesn't just contain the software, but some certificates and additional data. And then the browser will try, browser, uh, like Firefox, Chrome, or whichever browser you guys are using, it'll try to, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, install the package and then it'll check. The browser will actually check if that package is from a trusted uh, vendor. It can, can we actually trust that package? Uh, because the, you can actually upload anything on the internet and so if my friend, they, up, uh, they make a package and it's like the Grammarly tool. If I make a Grammarly tool thing, and you guys want to know it? I can actually add anything in that package, but it has to be from a trusted vendor. So my browser is actually going to check if uh, it's before not the browser introduced this tag. Yeah. Th this was a common issue back when the internet was still young. Uh, malware <laughs> software or any other software used to load extension in your browser without asking your permission. To combat that, they introduced this tag. So we all, so can, can, can you go back to uh, that previous thing, the internet explorer? Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, so y you guys can see that. Now I can, I can actually, you know, I, I don't know if it's from a trusted vendor or not. I can actually put all my details and someone can do searching or, you know, they can actually retrieve my data from that. Yeah, to come to that, that's what it's called. Okay, let's go. So this is uh, uh, this is how the add-on thing works. Uh, my if my browser is like, okay, this is from a trusted vendor. It'll actually you know download the thing and you can use it. So now Malav is going to explain you about hacking. Uh. I'll brief briefly go over the steps on uh, why the issue was in occurred in the first place. Uh, we'll start with the simple man in the middle attack. Uh, a man in the middle attack can be performed in any kind of network, not just a computer network. Uh, third, an unauthorized party usually ins uh, inserts themselves uh, communication or a certain kind of endeavor between two parties. Uh, I have a fun example for the non-computer science related. It's a plot of a Bollywood movie, Hera Fairy, uh, where a child was kidnapped and gangster called uh, Three Stooges. 
and they had this brilliant idea to profit from this uh, missed information or call they got and ask the child's father for a ransom of twice the amount and uh, the father gave them money but they are now in a problem to how to get the girl safely so it's a fun and one of the best Hollywood movies out there in a comedy genre so watch it if you want next slide uh, this is the simple uh, way where a client wants to communicate with the server but the hacker man is sitting in the middle of the network and intercepted every request coming out of the client uh, so the client sends a request to connection uh, the hacker man forwards that connection uh, that request to the actual server server responds with some html css and js a uh, hacker tries to modify the JS and sends it back to the client. Client thinking it's from an actual server. Just simply runs that JavaScript. Uh, meanwhile, that malicious JavaScript has introduced some things that uh, when the user enters his email, the email is sent to the hacker and the password, it also sent to the hacker. But now when the user actually clicks on the login button, uh, the actual post request to the server goes on uh, and then you, the client hacker forwards it while stealing all your credentials. Next slide. Uh, so to combat this, smart people invented uh, many new things and one of those was public key encryption where uh, each client and server generates a two pair of keys. One is the public key and another is a private key. Uh, if the client wants to send the com any communication to the server, it encrypts its data or the request with the server's public key that only server can decrypt and read the content and respond back to the client. But before sending it back, the server actually encrypts the, the, the response with the client's public key and the client at the end uh, gets the decrypted data with the, its own private key and hacker man in between is confused to what to do. Uh, next slide. Uh, but our hacker man is also, if you have watched Mr. Robot, is a smart guy. Uh, and he has completely intercepted all the communication between client and server. So when a client asks for a server's public key, uh, the hacker just gives his own public key uh, and client is like, okay, I got the server's public key, must be safe. And it goes on to perform the same action again. Meanwhile, the hacker man is unhappy with uh, getting all the data out of it, thinking that client is a fool. I have made a fool of him. Uh, he doesn't know that I know his password and email. Uh, next slide. Long story short, Bob is having a hard time closing the right. <laughs> Uh, so Tarish will continue this topic. So, uh, so now to counter um, the interceptions, uh, we have sort of things. And that's the one the big job thing. OK, so now that's youth, that's server, and we have this guy. Yeah. So they can catch me if you can. Uh, the Tom Hanks from Catch Me If You Can, if you want yeah. Okay, so this guy is responsible, you know, to verify that, you know, all the encryption that you're getting is actually from a trusted vendor, you know. So, okay, so what do you say? We, I, I have a private key, I have a server public key, and a CA public key, that is, you know, sort of the public key. And we have a server, it just has a private key, and can, so I'm not going to go into AES uh, encryption because that's way out of our league. Right now, so we get a, now uh, I need to trust the guy who's supposed to send me the data, okay? And he's supposed to help me. So that's why we have CA, a certificate authority, and he helps us out with that. Next slide. So uh, yeah, but but uh, but the thing is, it's not uh, like the hacker man. I robot guy, he can still <coughs> hack into it. So how 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 can hackers you know uh, hack the uh, the communication? Is okay. So we are supposed.
supposed to get uh, uh, confirmation from C A, so I think it's a horror. But the hack attack can actually do it with a forged request or you know acknowledgement that you know I got the certificate from a, a fake. And uh, I'll explain to you in the next like two minutes. So yeah, so if I get a fake request. That's what I'm gonna get. It, this is like, uh, you know, this is not from a certified authority Pop. and. Pop. Pop. Give me the two sentence summary of a video. What happened? Okay, so uh, no, no, I'm no, supposed no. to. Forget that. Like, talk to me. What happened? So, what happened exactly is uh, this is a certificate chain. Okay, so I'm. So, so when I. Download uh, some some add-ons. Okay, so I get a package. Okay, so, so it's my browser. Maybe it's it's Firefox, it's Chrome or Safari. So when I download that thing, I just don't get the add-on. I get a certificate. Okay, my computer is supposed to verify. What the happens if I don't have that certificate? Then uh, we're not gonna go to the verification part. The verification is not never fail, gonna happen. Right? Yeah, it's gonna fail. Yeah. If the certificate is not valid. The installation fails. Fail. We are actually we're gonna explain okay. to you. Okay, hold on. It's just that you gave me hope to at least for a second. So you know why you have a certificate authority, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. You know that you need to install stuff in your computer, uh -huh. right? Why do you need trust? Because I, I take over. Yeah, no, uh, you can, but uh, I, I'll tell you. I, I'll just give you. Yeah, go. I need to trust where I'm getting the data from. I don't know if it's someone else intercepting my connection. Right. Right? But, so usually it's Google, uh, what is it? Yeah. So, subject and issuer. So my, yeah. event, eventually I need to, f uh, my, my, uh, my OS is uh, supposed to be sure that it's from the right, right. Uh, place. Perfect. Yeah, from the right issuer. Yeah. Okay. And this is the last step. It starts from there, it starts there. My, my, my OS, if it's like, it's good with the issue and subject that it came from the right guy, I'm gonna download it. Otherwise, that's what went wrong with Mozilla. The intermediary got expired. And it's who was expired. the intermediary? No, who was the intermediary? The intermediary certificate got expired, right? Right, Mozilla certificate yeah. got expired, which means that? Uh, no, no worries. So the, the add-ons. You to verify against them. Yeah, the, like so the, the add-ons are not broken, right? Uh -huh. Okay, now take over. I'll take over the slide. Uh, okay. No, no, one more slide. We Anything else missing from here? Uh, yeah. Okay, go. Uh, okay, uh, if, like I have explained the man in the middle attack, and if you still have a doubt, like can we trust a certificate, so in this slide, it's just an explanation if a hacker tries to insert in, in, insert Hold himself on. between the hmm. guys. You know this is this happened very recently. I told you we could hear each other. They're they're doing a very good job of explaining something that is not super straightforward. <coughs> so we have ten minutes left in the class. Please try to focus on what they're saying. So if a hacker tries to intercept the communication between you and the server, uh, somehow, <coughs> but your server, your server client or the PC would not trust that device because if a hacker tried to give you a fake certificate generated by the Mr. Abignal Certificate Authority, uh, which is clearly not the Tom Hanks Certificate Authority, uh, if you get a if you get a certificate, it will go on to verify that, uh, yeah, my website is mysweetportfolio.dev and it is given by Google LLC. But now the hacker gave him that I, my certificate is Frank Abignal Certificate Authority. Then uh, I'll ask myself, uh, is Mr. Abignal Certificate Authority trustable? I don't know anything about him. I can't find any information about him then uh, your con your connection would be stopped and he'll just respond to you. Or you can say to that uh, there is a hacker in the network and I will not communicate with this server right now. Uh, next slide. 
so what is that this is what a typical expert certificate would look like if you visit a website with one uh, your browser give you one potential this right you can continue to look the website you just have to go to three four more buttons in the advanced step uh, this is a link where you can see many more uh, certificate related issues by try to if you want to explore next slide yes okay so uh, uh, we started off with mozilla so what happened so the thing happened the intermixing messed up and uh, it, it, it got expired so we took like 12 hours to fix it right am, am i right yeah yeah so they had to, like 12 hours and they got all the complaints and stuff so they had like two options either you can what you can do is change your time like your pre os time you know if it's like expiring on fourth you change your time to like second or first may or something so that you know it's still valid so that was just like a hot fix the actual solution what they did is like they made a new certificate that is like valid for a couple more bought themselves time that's how like you know they uh, so it took, took them like 12 hours to fix that but still uh, there were prob problems with that uh, because you know so when you uh, it actually asks uh, so when you download a browser it asks you for permission you know that for automatic updates and you know sometimes you have to update it manually or sometimes it's updated automatic but if you then opt for automatic Thank you're not gonna get the changes get those changes okay okay so so and uh, 
at the when that a new certificate would again verify the root certificate. Thus, the user being able to continue experience the add-ons usage. Uh, though not all the users may have got the update or fixed the issue because in some cases the organization requires a system administrator to install or update the new software. So those users will be affected. Another users are those who have first at the launch of the Firefox they have opted out of telemetry and they are smart or those people that have disabled the auto updates. Yeah, just like in offices and colleges, you uh, cannot really install things uh, manually. You have to take permission from the administrator. So, uh, not uh, le Lessons learned have a big red fail safe button that you can always push to revert things that they work. Uh, manage your goals and track everything in a large project because people will always forget things uh, and software is never reliable. Thank you. Yeah, and don't always check Excel or any of the other kind of information. Okay. <laughs> Thank Very you. Very well done. Three minutes to go. Questions? Uh, before the expiry, sorry, not to question you, but inquiry. Uh, before expiry, they didn't get any receive, uh, received any notifications or emails. Uh, regarding that. So, how many full time engineers do you estimate Firefox have? <laughs> 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 how many engineers do you estimate Firefox have? Not cheating. Yeah, I'm I know, but that's cheating. Yeah. How many full time engineers do you think Firefox have? Um, a bunch. <laughs> yeah, but Safe to say a thousand. Yeah. And no one took care of the yeah. email. I uh, don't think that it was a problem of no one got an email. I think it was a problem of someone else will take care. Exactly. Mm. Uh, and another issue with that is when you have a root key pair that is stored in a vault, right? Only few people have access to those or know that these things exist here. Mm -hmm. And they would generate a certificate that would be valid for 10 years, 5, 7 years. And uh, if they are change they leave the firefox as you know firefox has recently dwindling down in its market share and have to fire people so a new guy won't know that this thing was Katie. going to expire Katie. it's actually at your physical drive right oh uh, yeah you cannot hamper with that Uh, it was uh, no, 
the root certificate was actually uh, is root certificate is installed in every computer uh, every yeah. browser yeah but i'm huh. i'm i'm not 100% sure because i told you my details are uh, nah, off. I have you, read about no no hold on yeah. i am almost sure that firefox was themselves a certificate authority yeah you see yeah it was their root certificate that one that was that was messed up Now the intermediary certificate, root certificate was stored on the hard uh, hardware security module. Okay. Uh, they use that to, to make an add-on of uh, add-on for add-on. They created a certificate. One half a step. Okay. Anything else? Okay. See you Thursday with the second part of CSS. Another cool thing that if you want to know, the slides were not made in a PowerPoint presentation. It was actually in HTML, CSS, and JS.